uh, joining us to this event. We're very excited. I've had the uh, great pleasure of having worked with Shaku for a number of years now. And uh, she knows she's a uh, well-renowned author of a number of books. I think six best-selling books, including the, uh, the Business Intelligence Roadmap. Uh, she's actually going to be sharing with us some of the material that she's working on that, uh, for a new book on dashboards this morning. Uh, she's really going to go through and uh, help us take us through this morning uh, how to plan, uh, design, and then uh, uh, develop and deploy a, uh, a performance dashboard in a very efficient manner, starting from the data all the way through to the visual output at the end. And then uh, uh, we'll kind of demonstrate some of the concepts that uh, Shaku is going to take you through. Uh, and then in the afternoon, uh, there'll be a hands-on workshop uh, across the way where we'll uh, literally have you develop a performance uh, dashboard within the, uh, the period of the afternoon as well. So, uh, and uh, as an incentive, there will be prizes for the, uh, the best dashboard that gets produced in the afternoon. So we have a couple of iPads to give out later, uh, so stay tuned for that, and, and hopefully you'll be able to stay with us the whole day. Uh, really kind of go through, as I said, from the data all the way through to the visual uh, uh, output that uh, you know, you'll be producing at the, by the end of today. So uh, very excited to, us, uh, to have uh, Shaku join us. Uh, she's helped us on a number of occasions in various capacities in terms of uh, various uh, speaking engagements and so on. Uh, but this time she's really here to uh, teach us all how to uh, build an effective performance dashboard. And uh, so without any further ado, Shaku Atre. Thank you. Can you hear me now? The backbenchers. Okay. Thank you very much, Nabi. It always has been delightful working with Nabi and with Actuate. I appreciate very much for inviting me here. By the way, I am standing. <laughs> okay, so we are going to cover a whole bunch of topics. And Mark has told me, Mark is our second speaker. I call him Bert Wizard, our open source wizard. And we have also Jeff Morris, who is going to speak or tell us about his conditions about your being able to win this iPad, which Nabi just showed for the afternoon. That's the catch. You have to stay here the afternoon, OK? And you have to actually do something. And only then you have the possibility of getting iPad. And by the way, next week, Apple is going to come out with iPad 3. and I. I see, or I have read, it has some problems, so you're better off with this iPad. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Now, one of the things which I wanted to mention is that there are few books out there on dashboards, and nobody, nobody tells you how to start with the real, actual, raw data. They always talk about which graphics you should have, which colors you should have, how you should present it, whom you should present, but where is the data? I mean, you do not go from summaries to details unless you are committing fraud, which has happened not on the upper side of this city. It has happened downtown. Okay, so we need to know how to get started with the real data and then come up with summaries and not the other way around. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do, show you starting from real honest to God data to take you to the dashboard. Okay, so first of all, one of the disclaimers before I start. If you think you can get rid of Excel because you are going to develop dashboards. You are mistaken. Because if you want to get rid of Excel, Excel will get rid of you. Okay, so Excel is going to be around. Our spreadsheet software is going to be around. And it has its pluses 
and it has its minuses. And so does dashboard has its pluses and its minuses. Okay, going drilling down in the data, you cannot do with Excel. Whereas with dashboard, if you have planned and designed it accurately or correctly, then you can do that. But with Excel, you can do something very quickly. It takes a little bit time with dashboard. Okay, and I have three maxims of any project. No matter which project you are talking about, whether it's computer-based or non-computer-based, it always takes longer than you think, it always costs more than you think, and you always get less than you think. Any project. Okay, so dashboard is not an exception. So this is not a quick fix. Okay, there is work involved in developing and designing and implementing and using dashboard. Another disclaimer is that if there is a big thick wall between your IT and user community, then you are going to have some big problems in implementing dashboards. Because dashboard is not like a payroll system which you design, develop, and it's mostly going to remain the same, maybe a few tweaks here and there. But with dashboard, because it's reflecting your business and business is constantly changing, your dashboard has to adjust to that. And for that, IT has to communicate well with the user community and user community how to communicate, also interact with IT all the time. Okay, so those are the two disclaimers before we get started. Okay, now first I'm going to start with saying what a dashboard is not. A dashboard is not about cute icons. It's not about unrealistic and unreliable key performance indicators and so on. It's not about dazzle, but it is more about simplicity, communication. Main intent of a dashboard is communicate. And if you are not doing that, then you are going to have a very successful failure. Okay, so it's for communication purpose. Above all, it is about communication and also think international now because internet has shrunk the business. It's the dashboard which you are developing today may be used in China tomorrow or even today or it may be used in Riyadh, or it may be used wherever. So some places, like China, likes red. So when you are choosing colors, think international. China, red. There are some countries which like green. There is a country, some people like orange, some people hate orange. Okay, so you have to know about that, uh, about the international thoughts. You have to think about internationally now because your dashboard could be used anywhere without your knowledge. With that, I remember one little anecdote. I present and speak. I have spoken with in many, many, many countries. One place I was in Sao Paulo in Brazil. Somebody from the audience asked me a question which was a very good question. So I said, perfect. The person who was coordinating it, he quickly took a break. He came to me running and said, don't do that. Okay, this was Brazil. Of course, I didn't ask him what does that mean. I could figure out what it could be and I hope you too can figure out. So that means every place there are cultural differences. So think about cultural differences. As I said, I have been to so many countries that also got me in trouble because we were supposed to, FBI, the FBI contacted us and I was supposed to design their distributed databases because the criminals move, right? So you need distributed database. So we were going to design distributed database and two agents came to our office because we were going to get top security clearance. Two agents came to our office. I was sitting like this. They were sitting across from me. Behind me was our bookshelf. And one of the agents 
those are the agents who keep their hands in their pocket. Those are the ones, okay? So one of the agents kept on looking at the bookshelf. So I said, since when did these FBI agents, the ones with this, become so literate? So he got up, and what did he do? He pulled out a copy of my book, okay, which is translated in Russian. Okay, he saw that from here, it was in Russian. So he pulled that out. He asked me, did you write this? I said, yes. He said, I said, the, I wrote English version. The publisher or somebody got it translated in Russian. He said, where are you in Russia? I said, yes. Where? I said, Moscow, St. Petersburg. By the way, St. Peter, Petersburg from Russia and St. Petersburg in Florida. St. Petersburg in Florida is absolutely no match, no offense. St. Petersburg, Russia is such a beautiful city with all the waterways and all that. But anyway, Moscow, St. Petersburg. By the way, St. Petersburg also has Hermitage. St. Petersburg, Florida has most probably no museum. Anyway, I'm sorry. I mean, I have nothing against St. Petersburg, Florida if somebody is from there or somebody goes there. Now is the bigger reason not to go there. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> St. Petersburg, Florida. But they spell it also the same way. I looked. It's not B-E-R-G, it's B-U-R-G. St. Petersburg came from Peter the Great, the czar who established that city to open up for business for the because that's the only place up north which doesn't freeze 11 and a half months of the year. Anyway, so St. Petersburg, Moscow, where else? Well, I have been to Holland, uh, Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic. He said, why? I said, because they are there. So he said, you have to come and take a lie detector test. I said, I was excited. I said, wonderful, when? Because I don't know anybody who has taken a lie detector test, thank God, and without paying for it. <laughs> so international has, you have to think internationally now. Anything you do, think international. That was another problem with the FBI, was that we got the contract, by the way. Because one thing I know though, once you have taken the lie detector test, the first time you don't know how to lie. Second time you do. If, I have suppo if I'm going to take one, I would know how to lie. That means what? Lie detector test should not be considered as the final reason for capital punishment. Because it's not difficult to lie. But anyway, so a, there was another problem with the FBI. There were 20 million records. 20 million records? There was no Hadoop then. Okay, and by the way, I asked, I think Nabi, you explained that to me. I said, I went around looking for Hadoop. What does it stand for? Because in IT, one of the things we always do very well, if we cannot dazzle them with our brilliance, we know how to confuse them with terminology. I'm sure you knew what I was going to say, right? But, <laughs> but I am being recorded. Okay, so 20 million records. I said, okay, 250 or 300 million population, 20 million, that means almost every 10th person is a criminal. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you. <laughs> so I said, 
How is that possible? 20 million records. Two main reasons. One is that these criminals have multiple names, AKA, right? Torn right ear John, cement foot Charlie. Those are the names, right? Those are the AKAs. So that's why one person has three names. So that cut down already into one third. The second reason is that when these criminals, see, you cannot delete a record in FBI database unless there is a death certificate. And these criminals do not die publicly, right? So there are people in the database who are like 130 years old. How, how much harm can they do? Okay, so anyway, so international and communication. Remember that, international. You will remember this because I told you these stories. You will think about international because I have given you these stories, okay? All right, so then we, what we say is that what it is not, and we have to see what it is, okay? We will go into that. Okay, so now what we have, we say that it's, it's dashboard, the new face of BI, business intelligence. And here, what we are seeing here is that, first of all, we have three types of data. Can you see in the very back? Because I always like to watch the back benches. Because they always sit to the exit road, exit doors. Can you see? No? no? You cannot see. Do you want to? Okay, well, this is where it is at. Do you want me to knock on the wall? <laughs> okay, three types of data. By the way, I have at the end, if you want to have slides, you can send me an email and I will send those to you. Okay, that doesn't mean you don't pay attention. Okay, I watch everybody. Everybody. Okay, I will know if you are not paying attention. Of course, when you're thinking something else, that I don't know. Okay, three types of data. Type one is the real honesty guard data, detailed transaction data from online transaction processing, such as your, your with, from legacy systems, from desktop, from laptop, from mobile gadgets, all of it is now online transaction processing. By the way, we, if somebody says legacy systems are going to go away, it's not because the 10-year-old system is now be, has become legacy. Five-year-old has become legacy. We will always have legacy systems. And my definition of a legacy system is that a system that runs, but nobody knows how. That's a legacy system. So don't touch it. Do not touch it. If it's running, don't touch it. Because it does expect some dirty data. If you clean it, it won't run. Okay, so legacy systems, just leave them alone. So online transaction processing. The second level is the, when you do the com combination of them and come up with the summaries, it's with the online analytical OLAP, online analytical processing OLAP. And they call them cubes. Cube doesn't mean it is only three dimensions. It's just called cube. You could have 10 dimensions but it's still called cube. Cube does not mean it's only three dimensions. Okay, keep that in mind because people get then thinking, oh, I have five dimensions, how am I going to do it? Because I cannot make a cube. Okay, you can have cube with 10 dimensions, 15 dimensions, as long as you can hold the data and can have access to it. So OLAP and the graphical data. So that's our one, which is the three types of data. What happened to this thing? Made in China, sorry. The second level is now here, three types of users. We have the executives at the top and the middle management and the staff in the trenches who actually do the work. The third one is the different types of performance dashboards, which is we are talking about strategic performance dashboard, 
analytical or tactical performance dashboard and operational performance dashboard. And for that, we have to develop three types of applications, which Mark is going to show how to do it. Right, Mark? Okay. So with that, I lost my here. Okay. Um, so now what we are going to see after my presentation is Mark going to speak about the BERT 360, open source, it's open source software. So do you want to just briefly say something, Mark? Sure. Um, actually, Sheku had presented us with uh, this case study, and we actually went through all of the exercises that she'll detail, from creating the data, ETLing it into a schema, and then creating the BERT assets that we use to consume that data and create dashboards. So we're very, very proud to show that to you today, and you'll be seeing that in just a little while. Okay, great. And then we have a workshop and Jeff, if you could mention something about what is going to be in the workshop. Oh, sure. So the exercise uh, later on this afternoon is um, we're going to put BERT, uh, BERT 360, the, the product that Mark's going to show you, in your hands. So we have a lab set up uh, uh, next door. And uh, within that lab, you're going to end up, uh, you can use the database that Mark uh, and Shaku go over this morning. Or we'll give you a couple of other examples to, uh, to build from. Um, and then we'll build some dashboards. And whoever builds you know, the nicest looking dashboards or the most informative dashboards will uh, uh, be in the running for uh, receiving one of these um, uh, fancy new tablet devices that's you know, nearly obsolete, as Shaku pointed out earlier, but, uh, <laughs> but not quite. Still, no, I, still what, quite no right. what did I say? No, you said this, one, this, is, the, this is the stable version. Never go version, with but, uh, release one of anything. <laughs> anything. No release one. And that is release one right. next week. What Mark's showing you is release 11. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, we'll, we'll have some fun later on this afternoon. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so this is going to be this afternoon. So we are preparing for the afternoon. Okay, so don't eat too much. Because after lunch, people are very peaceful. Okay, you have to work. All right, now these are the 10 steps. I will be going through first six steps. Understand the environment, of course, what we are doing it for. Then decide on key performance indicators. Start with the raw data. Determine data requirements for improvement of performance. That means which data. And create a data model. I'm going to use some relational database management system. Okay, and I'm assuming Almost everybody has heard at least the word relational database management system. Yes? Yes? The backbenchers. Okay. Um, who was that? Relational? Relational? Yeah, I think so. I, th I think so, but legacy is going to stay with us. Somebody told me the other day, COBOL is going to be dead. Okay. I said, no. She said, how come? I said, because there are 20,000 COBOL programmers out there. Unless you kill them all at once, COBOL is not going to be dead. Is that true? So, okay, maybe I should stand here then. I know how, how you see it. Okay. Um, so construct metadata repository with the what does the data mean? What are the relationships between the data? and what are the business rules regarding the data. So those are the first six steps I'm going to cover, and Mark will be covering the ECTL. I mean, you know, I mean, I told you about the acronyms. Um, by the way, there is an acronym out there, which is called ACP, ACPCU, ACPCU, American Society of Prevention of cruelty towards users, <laughs> ACPCU. You want to be a member? Okay, so he will be covering ECTL, then data management language, creating the basic queries, which we will see a little bit later, and preparing storyboards, and developing and implementing the performance dashboard. So those are the four steps which Mark is going to cover. And all of these st ten, 10 steps, you are not going to do all 10 in the afternoon. Mark has pre 
loaded the database, which he's going to give the database to you, right, Mark? That's correct, that and several other example data sources. Okay, and Jeff is going to be the judge this afternoon. What do you like, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> which dashboards do you like? I like clear dashboards. I like ones that are using appropriate use of, of visualizations. We like, uh, you know, with that, you know, the example that we often cite is, uh, you know, when you need to display negative numbers, a pie chart is probably not the appropriate thing to use, right? But making sure that uh, where where the, the visualizations make sense, the uh, appropriate use of, and value of navigation, things like that, is what we're going to be looking for. Okay, you will repeat them again. Of course. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's get started now. So this is our video store case study. Now, I pick video store because I'm a movie buff. Okay. I have seen many, many, many outstanding movies, so have you. I used to live, I grew up in India, and I lived in a very small village where there was only one movie theater. And we lived across the movie theater. So any new movie, I was in there, okay? But the, there was only one problem. The movie theater, they didn't start the movie until the house was full. It was a little village. So until the house was full, the movie didn't start. We had somebody who used to work for us in our household. He asked me, he was from another smaller village. He asked me, when do these actors come and when do they leave? I never see them coming in and going out. That was the movie, okay? So that's the type of environment. So I'm a movie buff, so I picked video store as the case study. So we. Their environment is what? We, of course, I have made it, simplified it, because it's much more intricate than to cover it in an hour and a half, okay? So, can have only one rent price or sale. That means the customers can either go and rent it at a movie theater, mo at, the, um, at the video store, brick and mortar video store, or they could rent it or buy online. Okay, so a movie can have only one rent price or sale price, one customer may have many rented and so on. So that's the first thing we have to understand is what are we, what is our business environment for which we are developing this dashboard? Do we understand it? We have to talk to our users who are our customers, that's the way we have to look at them. The users are our customers and the customer is always right. That's the way we have to think about it. And if the users, they, they, if they tell you, oh, give me this, that's all what I want, don't trust them. When they tell you this is all what I want, you be careful because that means that's just the beginning. And you should be happy about it. If they want more, that means they are interested. So don't say, I'm going to have a scope creep. They, it will be there. Scope creep is a given for any project. Okay, so just live with it. Be happy that they want to have something more. When they say, oh, I'm just fine, whatever you give them, don't be happy about that. No, now then you know they don't like it. When they say, everything is fine, whatever you give them, that means they don't like it. When they ask for something more, that means they like it and they want more. Okay, so that's our business environment. Then. The second thing, the second step is decide the key performance indicators, and that's where we are going to spend a little bit more time. So key performance indicators, that means what? That means what is the most important aspects which we want to display on our dashboard? What is it that our users really need to decide on their targets whether they have met the objectives about competition and so on. So the most important things, aspects of the business should be displayed on the dashboard. So key performance indicators. So measure of importance that one can act upon, often represented as a percentage or a ratio of actual figures. That means somebody says, I want to increase the revenue by 2% next year as compared to last year. That's a number, fact, okay? That's a fact. A number does not lie, a fact. 
So what is the measure that they are interested in? And if somebody gives you a list of 50 items, that means they missed it. You should not have more than three, four, five at the most, the most important things that you want to have displayed on the dashboard. If you have a list of 50, that means you don't know what is important. Okay? So, so it could be financial or non-financial metric, and it should be a success indicator. That means what is my target, what's my objective, how much have I reached, that's the success indicator. And for that, I would highly recommend a book, The Balanced Scorecard by Kaplan and Norton. And I think Actuate has something in that area with the uh, scorecard, right? So you look at that book. It's an outstanding book. And I would say try to get the first edition, not the second edition, first edition. Because second one is a little bit watered down. Take the first edition if you can get it. And you can get it used book on Amazon. So KPIs always are interrelated like debt to equity ratio, asset turnover, profit margin, just like our health. What's the, what's the biggest performance indicator or the most important performance indicator of our health? What would that be? I'm not a physician, but I would think it will be blood pressure, one of them, right? Cholesterol level, and few others, let's say three, four, that's what real physician looks for immediately. The first, those are the first signs, right? So, and they are all interrelated. The blood pressure with cholesterol, with whatever, pulse and whatnot, they are all interrelated. They don't stand in vacuum. The same way a business is like a body. A business is a body. You have to think about that like a body. It has its brain, it has its heart, it has its muscles. How are they interrelated? And they are all interrelated. KPIs are all interrelated, so it's based on meaningful and well-defined KPIs. So it, I mentioned that your success depends heavily on the alignment of the business community with IT, because you cannot develop a dashboard and think now, okay, I'm done now. That's it. You have to constantly update it with the changed business environment. If you don't do it, then you know what happens. To, there are many casualties along the roadside. I mean, how come company like Starbucks comes up and they were before that, people drank coffee, didn't they? Can, does anybody remember some of those coffee brands? No, right? So there are casualties along the road because they did not adjust to the changing business environment. And so that's what it is. So now we say how to decide on the KPIs for your performance indicator, um, for the performance dashboard. We say now here, step A, select five KPIs crucial to your success. Set targets you can measure. Okay, and I have a, am I standing, why don't you sit over there? Okay, okay, because I'm thinking about you in the back. Okay, um, so you have to set targets, objectives, and see whether you are meeting and how off are you. What do you have to do to meet the objective? That means you have to set the objective right first. Achievable, and we will see what are some of the criteria for the uh, KPI. Now, which performance zone are you in for each target? Let's assume you set up a target. Where do we stand with the number of movies we have for rental or purchase compared to our five competitors? We are a video store. Okay, so now we say target is first place, of course. Okay, and you should be happy if you are the second place, but you set the target at the first place. Now, see, we are in the third place. That's where we are. Okay, now, if suppose, now these are indicators which I pick now here. Let's assume you come up with some indicator. You come up with five indicators. And every time, so these are, this is here green, green, yellow, red for you backbenchers, okay? There are five columns here, five columns. The first column says KPI, second column from left to right, target. The third is green, yellow, and red, okay? Okay, so now let's say you try to figure out where do you fit now for that one KPI or for all the KPIs now. 
if you have all of them in green, that means you are lying. You are lying. Straightforward lie. And everybody is not going to notice it. Never think that the person on the other side of the table is stupid. You might be stupid, not the other person. Okay, so if everything is green, you're lying. Okay? So don't lie. If everything is in red, that means you're suicidal. Okay? There should be good combination of green, yellow, and red. And this is not a statistical way of proving. This is very subjective. But if you have a lot of experience and you are you know your business, you become quite objective. Okay? So it should be good combination. And then you try to see how I can move something which is in red into yellow. Don't try to be a martyr from trying to move from red into green because it's not going to happen. Okay? So you have this is just a quick assessment. It is not a statistical proof. Okay, so now this is what I have given you as a blank one. So this afternoon when you are working, maybe think about that. Okay, so step C, measure, record, and report. Step D, identify and analyze deviations. Is that lower than the target? How much low is that? Is that 5% lower or 80% lower? If it's 80% lower, we have to adjust the screws somehow. Maybe our target was not right. So you don't go all the way to the end to implement your dashboard and have a successful failure. Okay, you have benchmarks in between. All right, so low, lower than the target, meeting the target. Maybe we made the target too easy or exceeding the target then maybe we did something wrong. Okay, our target was not set right. Maybe sometimes to win a project, you may have to lie a little. Okay, just a little. That's the one thing which IT has to learn, to play politics. Okay, to get the projects. There's nothing better than getting a project assigned, budgeted. Okay. So then what action should be taken? There are some actions which need to be taken immediately. Let's assume there is something wrong with F FDA has said that you are, do you remember that Tylenol or something which was opened and so on? Immediate action because otherwise there is going to be headline in the New York Times or wherever and that is going to throw us back. Forget about dashboard and forget about everything else. It's going to be throw us back zillion times than what we think. So immediate action in short term, define what is short term. Okay, what is short term? What's long term? So these are the various steps you have to do. So for smart, our KPI has to be smart. That means it has to be specific. It has to be measurable. S specific, measurable. It has to be achievable. It has to be relevant and result-oriented, and it has to be time-bound, not ad infinity, ad infinitum, okay? So specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and result-oriented, and time-bound. It has to be achievable, otherwise it's going to be very disappointing and we will leave the project. So this has to be, our KPIs have to be smart, okay? And I will show you something after that, how to put the weighing system on that. Then decide on the KPIs, establish a say, KPI selection committee. Not too big. Nothing is accomplished when the team is too big. Nothing. Maybe five, six people. Okay? Important people. Also, out of those, maybe a couple of them who have deep pockets. Okay, from your users, all right? Seven, maximum. Seven is usually a good number, seven, okay? Now, when we take that, 
let's not make that into a task force. This is a committee which can make decisions. A task force does not make decisions. Okay? A ta don't even call it a task force. I have a definition. Do you want to hear my definition of task force? Is anybody on a task force here? Because you are going to hate me. Now, when I say that, nobody is going to be on the task force. <laughs> right? Okay. My definition of task force is it's a group of... He is on a dashboard. He's on a task force. <laughs> a task force is a group of incompetence selected from a group of unwillings to do something unnecessary. <laughs> okay, so let's say we have a selection committee where they can make decisions and say this is the way we are going to do it and for these, these, these reasons. We don't do it this way because of this, this, this. Who can make decisions, selection committee. Prioritize the KPIs and publicize them and give timeline. By then and then we have to have results. Your recommendation or whatever. If you don't meet that deadline, goodbye. Okay. Um, decide on the number of performance dashboards to be developed, one or many performance dashboards, because you most probably are not going to be done with one performance dashboard, because you cannot put everything on that one performance dashboard. And we will see, we will come around, we will close the loop, but at the end I will show you do's and don'ts. Okay? So uh, decide how many. Decide on types of performance dashboards. Are they going to be strategic or tactical, analytical or operational? then uh, which, go, which KPIs go with which dashboard, and now select the top KPIs, score the KPIs individually, and I will give you that scoring, and final consensus in the team, and publicize it. Publicize it, and give reasons for not selecting some, because it's not always important to say, these are what we have selected, but also say why we did not select these and have rationale for them. Because somebody is going to come afterwards and say, oh, you didn't consider this. And that means what, another month. Okay, so publicize what you are going to select and publicize why you did not select some. Okay, and give reasons, give rationale. It has to be objective rationale. There is some there is always, no matter what we do, there is some little factor of subjectivity in almost anything. Anything that we do. But that should remain as minimum as possible. Okay? So now, so de 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 decide on the graphical presentation of colors, charts, alerts. And again, I have something in the don'ts. Get some artists involved, but don't let the artists lose. Because the artist will draw some painting for you. And you won't know what it was for. Okay? But IT people, when they have these fonts, they want to use all fonts at once. Because they are there. Okay? So there are two extremes. Right? So have some artist graphic artist who does some work with your dashboard and document all KPIs and circulate them. Okay, so let's take one example of three dashboards. One would be the strategic dashboard. One will be, I want you to move. I want you to move. Okay. You're a customer, so you're right. Are you a customer or are you with Actuate? Are you sure? <laughs> okay, so let's take strategic dashboard. Then we'll take the same one, how it would look in the tactical or analytical. And the third level will be operational. Of course, I'm starting at the top level. Doesn't mean top is better. Don't misunderstand. At this level, strategic level, tactical level or analytical level, and operational level. To tell you the truth, we will not have strategic dashboard if we do not have operational people. 
okay? People in the trenches are very, very important. Because of them, we have the data. Remember that. Okay, so now let's take just one strategic objective, increase revenue by 10% over last year. Okay? That's our objective. What is the KPI? Revenue increase percentage current year versus last year. That means in the performance dashboards, one of the variable which always will be there is time. Because you are going to compare your own performance for this year versus last year or the year before. This quarter with last equivalent, like if suppose you are comparing this winter quarter, then you compare with the winter quarter of last year and the winter quarter of the year before. Because let's assume you are a retail company. People which buy warm clothes, they buy only in the fourth quarter, let's say, more. You cannot compare the fourth quarter with first quarter because there are different dynamics of purchase power, purchasing, okay? And you know that, you are the business person. Good business person has very good gut feels. The historian, the German historian, Rupert Lay, he said, you are successful when you know why you are successful. Okay? If you are successful, you know why you are successful. I'm not talking about the Enron Lay. As a result of Enron Lay, dashboard became more important because now corporate performance has to be declared. Any company which uses other people's money, which are publicly traded companies, have to come out with their performance each quarter. Okay? So that Enron Lay helped us. Didn't want to, but in a way he did. Okay, so now this is our strategic objective and KPI. What will be the tactical or analytical performance dashboard KPI? Tactic will be hold two additional lead generation events every month this year over last year. That's my tactic for analytical. What's the KPI for that? KPI will be number of monthly events this year versus number of monthly events last year. That's the KPI, key performance indicator. It's not the tactic, it's the key performance indicator. Indicator is not the tactic. The tactic is hold to additional. And then operational will be what? Increased number of qualified visitors. It's no use of having just the get together if they are not qualified. If they are coming only for coffee and donut, they are not going to give us any business. Okay, so qualified. Um, visitors by 50% at the lead generation events every month this year over last year. And the KPI will be number of qualified visitors at these events this year versus number of qualified last year. Okay? So you have tactic and then you have the indicator, performance indicator, which happens to be key performance indicator. Okay? So now, how do we select now KPIs? Let's assume, see, when you are in a committee, When I say some KPI, he is going to come up with another one because he doesn't want to accept only mine, right? He's going to come up with another one. This one, he doesn't agree with me. He's going to come up with another one, right? Okay, so this way we have now multiple KPIs. Now we have to come up with some way of selecting the key performance indicators. So let's do some weighing. And we came up with the SMART system, specific, measurable, achievable, result-oriented, time-bound. And nobody can fight on that. Okay? Is it measurable? It's either measurable or not measurable. Okay? So we use, again, the SMART system for the weighing. Now, you think about these weights by yourself. Thinking is usually done alone. Thinking should be done by yourself. And then you go into a group and analyze. Okay? And on your committee, 
you should not have only the people who always agree with everything that you say. Okay? You should have people who are devil's advocates, whom you hate. But they make you think out of the box. Okay? So don't always have people who are immediately going to say yes. What does that mean? That means don't have the manager and um, the person who reports to the manager on the same committee. Because the person who reports to the manager, the person is not going to open the mouth. Okay? People are honest one on one. People are more creative in a group because they want to outperform the others in a group. They want to come up with new ideas. And some ideas you may throw away. There was a company which wanted to do some community help. This was the company which was, which had some, some articles which were going to be wrapped in the assembly line. So any paper, and so let's say they were trapping in the newspaper. May I use this? Yeah. If suppose I get this paper, I immediately start to read. If I can read the language, right? No matter what piece of paper, something written document I have in my hand, I immediately start to read. Right? That's what it is. Okay. So now they said people are going to spend too much time on reading. And do you remember that the old um, with the cookies passing by and this, what was her, who was that? Lucy, Lucy Ball. They were putting the cookies in their mouth and stuffing them and so on. They were coming so quickly. So now if somebody starts to read, that's what is going to happen. Those pieces are going to just pass by, right? So they said, we want them not to spend too much time in reading. They said, okay, let's have the newspapers from other language. Okay? So if it's Russian, although I can read Russian because I'm a mathematician, I, and that's in Cyrillic. It's a Greek alphabet, so I can read it. But I don't know what it means. I can read it. But anyway, so have papers in the different language so that people won't spend time in reading it. But then the pictures are pictures. Especially if Angelina shows there in front of everybody how beautiful her leg is, everybody's going to stop and look at it. Right? So let's not take the papers because let's not take the papers with just foreign language papers. I said, how about hiring blind people? Okay? And that gave a big boost to the company's community work. Now they are hiring blind people to put to work with the, and they can make money. You see that? So this is what happens when you are in a group. People became, become creative in coming up with ideas. Some ideas are thrown out. It's okay. That's how the things develop, thinking out of the box. So now it has to be specific, measurable, achievable, result-oriented, and time-bound. And you give weights and then figure out and then fight it out. And there should be always somebody who makes the final decision. This is the way we are going to go, period. Democracy up to certain extent. Okay? Somebody has to take the decision, has to make the decision and be responsible. Okay? All right. Okay, so now these are our queries for our performance dashboard. Query one. Which were the top 10 rented or purchased movies in the last week, last month, last quarter, last year? That's our query one. Query two. Which customers have rented or purchased movies from us more than once a month, twice a month, three times a month? Is there any loyalty program? Do we have a loyalty program? Do we want to revise it? If not, should we start one? And so on. Which stores beat the 25,000 monthly revenue target? Which movies made the biggest revenue impact? Okay, and these are the queries you are going to show, Mark is going to show based on the database which he has loaded. So these are three queries. 
Once you give these three queries, the users are going to ask for more. Okay? And then be happy. Don't be mad at your users if they are asking more. That means they are interested. Scope creep. Scope creep. It's good. Only two factors that need to be worked on. With new requirements, new wishes, the time factor, which you have agreed to, and the money factor. As long as these two issues are settled, you should be happy that people are asking for more. Are you with me, what I'm saying? Because you have agreed to something to do by certain time for certain amount of money. If they want more, then that time frame has to be changed and money has to be changed. If they agree to these two, be happy about it. Okay? All right, so these are our three queries which we will be working on. Now, let's say we have our brainstorming sessions. We are in a committee. We are here, these, we are here people, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, perfect. So, we are ten people. We are going to look at these KPIs and we are going to have brainstorming session, okay? So, our number one KPI, what were the top ten rented or purchased movies last week, month, quarter, or year? Now, you're going to say, that's fine. But now I want to know what? I want to know which store, right? Or which geography? Because maybe we want to put more Spanish movies in an area where there are more Spanish-speaking people, right? All right? So now we say, okay, that's fine. So we refine that, go to the different, more dimensions. Okay, which are what? Store is one dimension. Then the, what was the other one? Geography is another dimension. And third one, you have to know. You're a customer. Okay, all right. So now, thank you. Okay, by time. Okay, which was our first question anyway. Week or quarter or whatever. Okay, so by store, by geography, by time. Okay, so that's how it's like peeling off the onion. Okay, those are, that's how you do with the KPIs. You start at the top layer and keep on going. I have one analogy though. Don't have too many layers. Not with your first dashboard. Because my analogy is this. More layers an onion has, more you are going to cry. Okay? So have maybe two or three layers for your first one. Okay? Of course, dashboard. All right, so that was our the brainstorming session. Are we doing okay, Kelly? Okay, um, because I, I don't stand in one place, I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Now what we do is that we do the storyboards. Not Disney style, but kind of. So if suppose you have, let's say, what do we do? How are the storyboards made in a a uh, movie, in Disney movie, they make what? Right? Like that? They make many. This is how high I can go. Okay? The back benchers. Okay? So here what we do, we want to go like quick, quick, quick with that. that that's the storyboard. And that's how I analyze, uh, how I have the analogy that when we do the... Um, window drop down, that's like you are having another storyboard, okay, with the window drop down. So that's how we are going to go to the next level, because you don't want to give the details on the first screen. There are different boxes there will be where they can, if suppose you are interested in this, you click on that and you go to that. He's interested in something else. Then he clicks on that and goes down. So it's not, dashboard is not designed and developed only for one person. Okay? So your interests may vary. Of course, there is certain limit to how many different interests you can show on the top dashboard, top layer. Okay? So here we go to that, and then we can keep on going down uh, further into the next level. But I would say for your first dashboard, performance dashboard, have maybe just two layers, just two, to test it out. 
Okay, so find more meaning in the numbers from the video stores. You may come up with questions like that. Which actors bring us the most money? I was impressed with Brad Pitt in his last two movies. Because otherwise, before that, I always thought his acting is chewing gum. But the last two ones, he did pretty good. Moneyball and the other one. Um, not that life something. Yeah. He did a pretty good job. Um, I also liked his acting in the, the River Runs Through It, Robert Redford. It was a very good movie, very good movie. But I think to a large extent it's Robert Hedford for that. Okay, which actors bring us the most money? Which genres of movies do we rent or sell the most? Comedy, drama, horror, thriller, action. Which one do we sell more? It also depends on the age group of the population in that area, okay? They may want more action, younger ones. Zooming in and out, that mission impossible, going on till what? Third or fourth mission impossible. You get dizzy when you see that, but not the 15-year-olds, okay? So it depends on many other things like business. Okay, so now with this we say, okay, we will be using BERT on demand and we are going to use the open source dashboard software. Can you say something about software as a service? Mark. Absolutely. So uh, what we'll be working with today is in fact a uh, on-premise installed iServer on a server. Uh, that we have set up in the classroom, but we want to emphasize that everything you'll see today is available as a software as a service offering in the cloud. Our iServer and all of the capabilities, BERT 360, BERT reporting, analytics are all a part of that uh, SaaS offering as well. So we wanted to make sure and mention that so that if you're uh, not already an Actuate customer but interested in what you learned today and want to uh, do a little bit more, maybe even show it off around your company. Bird on Demand is a great way that you can get started uh, uh, for, for a very low price point. There's a free trial even, um, and uh, and kind of kick the tires, so to speak. And uh, we encourage everybody, in fact, to save their work. We'll show you how and take it with you. You can actually upload what we'll uh, build today to Bird on Demand if you want to keep working with it. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so we are going to use that what we talked so far. Now let's go to the real data, which I promised to you, right? I told you we will be working with real honest God data. Okay? All right. So then we say start with the raw data. Okay. Now we come with something. Now it becomes serious. This is becoming serious now. Okay? That means we have to come up. We have to commit now. We have to commit to use our database. Okay? And you know with any data, there is some dirty data. Okay? Either it is inaccurate, inaccurate or inconsistent data is dirty data. And data is usually at the bottom of everything, right? And dirt collects at the bottom. Okay? So that means you don't have to clean all the data. You do not need all the data. At the most, I would bet with anybody, 5 to 10 percent data is what you use. At the most. Okay? So now we say, okay, we want to come up with the data. We have our KPIs. Now we are to decide which data do we have and which do we use? Okay, where do we put it? Where do we put it? We have to find a home for that data. So we are going to use relational tables. It's called a relation. A relation is a table which is made up of columns and rows. And by the way, that was my first book which, has, which, was, which I showed to you and translated in Russian and many other languages and has sold more than quarter million copies and it's not on jogging and it's not a cookbook okay because I have given case studies and I have committed to it I don't have only some small example here and in some of the chapters another example 
it's one case study carried throughout the book. Okay, so now let's take a look at the relation. So relation is just a table, simple, a table made up of columns which are called Okay, say it. Fields. Is that right? She's saying fields. Okay. So we have fields and what are the roads? Records. Who was that? Records. Okay. So we have columns and roads. So we will have now for our limited video store environment. It's a limited, okay? We are not trying to resolve all the problems of video store or of the movies. Okay? We have only director, writer, actors. We have movies, we have movies, we have John, the awards, movie awards, we have stores, we have time factor, we have customers. Okay? We have genres, which is drama or horror or whatever, and we have transactions, okay? So a customer renting or buying from a store at a certain time, a certain movie or movies, which may have certain awards, which has a director, and possibly actors and a writer and it is of certain type. That's it. Right? Those are our relations. That's our business. We have persons, then we have movies, we have awards, we have stores, time factor, customers, genre of the movie and and transactions. That's it. That's our environment, our video store. Now, determine data requirements for improvement of performance. Now, which data? Okay, we came up with the framework. Okay, those are our relations. Now, we have to fill them with something, right? We have to come up with columns, the fields, and then fill them with the records. Records are horizontal there, x-axis. Y-axis is our fields, okay? So now we say, okay, what are those? And these are the ones which Mark has filled, okay? So persons, we have direct movie ID, person ID, and person mode. The person could be either director or writer or actor. Did I say something? Okay. Then we have person ID where we have person ID and person name. Okay, so that's our first relation. Okay, persons. Are you with me? Both of them are in third normal form. I told you it's going to get a little bit serious. Are in third normal form. Okay, for the first one, for relation 1A, you need the movie ID and person ID to find out the person mode. Right? That's the key. Movie ID and person ID is the key for 1A. For 1B, the key is person ID. So both are in third normal forms. Okay? The second one, which is the movies, which has movie ID, title, release year, um, rental price, purchase price, runtime minutes. Now, I have a question for you, Mark. These are ancient movies before talkies. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. So, Mark. Some are. The, the database actually has several, tens of thousands of titles that we got. We actually got some information from IMDB, the Internet Movie Database. So for the sample table, we just threw in the first few records, obviously going back quite a ways. But uh, we actually have uh, movies right up till this year. So, okay. Yeah. I thought you just like these. <laughs> yeah. And I'm fond of uh, silent movies. I mean, the artist was beautiful. <laughs> I, I, you know, I had a question. I said, this guy is going to get Oscar, the, the artist, right? Is he going to speak? <laughs> that, was, that was my question. I said, is he going to speak on the stage when he gets that 
ask her. Is he going to speak? He did speak. I thought he was going to have some kind of... <laughs> okay, all right. So these are the movies. Then we have awards. Again, everything is in third normal form. And I'm not going into what is first normal form, second normal form, third normal form. Go look at my book. Okay? Relation stores. Then we have time. Isn't that beautiful? If we had this, we would not have the year 2000 problem. We have year, quarter, month, week, and day. And each month could have 31 days. And each week could have seven days, okay? And so would not have been a problem. If the key is what? Year, 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 quarter, quarter, month, month, week, day, day. Of course, that's a big key. But with this key, we will not have problems. Okay? Anyway, so what was that? Who was that? What did you say? <laughs> what? You must be an IT systems programmer. <laughs> he is thinking immediately bits and bytes, right? How much space is going to take? But now, people time is more expensive than the hard drive. Right? So if you want to read some of my columns, you should. One of them says, who in the world needs a data warehouse? Who in the world needs a hard drive? You could do in-memory analytics. Okay? So I have a 10-part series, Who in the World, which was published last year, with help of Actuate. I did it for them, and then we published that in the information management, who in the world. And it, th there are a number of things which are like tongue in cheek. And there is something about systems programmers too. <laughs> because one thing I'll tell you, I mean, I have been a systems programmer too in my previous life, okay? I have installed hardware software. I worked for IBM for a number of years. We all have and we still do, directly or indirectly. We, all of us. I worked for IBM and I was a systems programmer. Installed hardware and software. That's why when I'm speaking, I have made my hands dirty. Okay? And then I reached a glass ceiling where I said, now I have to leave. And besides, on top of it, when you reach certain level, all you do is go to meetings. You call anybody, everybody is in a meeting. What do they talk about? <laughs> Usually every meeting is over as far as importance is concerned in the first five minutes. Am I right? First five minutes, at the most ten minutes. But it gets stretched to two hours. You call anybody, everybody is in a meeting. That's when I say, uh-uh, I have to leave. Because at the end of the day, I have to be happy about what I did. I don't want to go to meetings all the time and talk about things which we never do. On top of it. Right? Am I right? You know what you can do? Set your alarm. You can set up your alarm of your phone. Usually when there is a noise, the meeting breaks. Try it. Try that. I did that. But then the people got my trick also then. <laughs> so, so I left IBM. After 14 years, I left IBM. I started my own company, which became pretty successful. It was bought by Coopers and Clybrand, which is PricewaterhouseCoopers. I became a partner. And of course, what do partner does? What does a partner do? Meetings. Of course, they put this on me for two years, so I had to go to meetings. But I figured out a way of sitting in a meeting and thinking about many other things. Okay? Anyway, after three and a half years, I said, forget it. Meeting, 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 out. 
and this is what I do. I do now writing, I do speaking, I have people working for me, but I have no responsibility of payroll. Anybody who has done an MBA has no idea about what a payroll means. Okay? You have, anybody who has been in an MBA should learn how to meet the payroll every two weeks. Okay, anyway. All right, so now let's go back to this data. Okay, now we have customer, and we're now going to the transactions. Okay, genre and movie genres, okay? Then we have transactions. So in the transactions, we have now movie ID, store ID, customer ID, rental or purchase, transaction date, return date, time, uh, transaction amount, ship cost, and tax, okay? So the facts are what? The facts are the numbers, which are what? The transaction amount, the shipping cost, and the tax. Okay? That's the fact. Remember that. That transaction is the fact. All the others are what? Dimensions. Okay? So now, with that, we go to the next level now. Create a data model. Now, I have to go up here to do it. Okay, so what we do now, wait a second. Okay, I'm going to draw something for you. I'm the worst draw person, okay? So, let's see. If we want to draw, now we have to, let's say we are talking about person as the box, okay? Can you see it? Okay, can you see it? I need a response. Okay, thank you. Then we have a movie. Okay, so this is person. My handwriting is worse than this. Okay, so P person could be what? A director or a writer or actor. This is movie. Kind of M, okay? All right, movie. Then we have what? We say a director could have directed many movies. True? Okay. So we need something to connect these two boxes. Am I right? Okay. I need a response. Yes? Yes? No? Okay. Because you cannot see me. Okay. Okay. So now here we are connecting these two. Okay. Okay. So now what do we put in here? person and the movie, right? P and M, right? Person, which could be director, or this is challenging now. And, ah, oh, got it. I tried it, okay? I, I did this trying before, and M, okay? So now we say, okay, David Lean, director. He directed what? Lawrence of Arabia. He directed The Bridge on the River Kwai and Dr. Shivago. All the big scale movies. Okay? So now, David Lean directed many movies. Many. More than one, many. So when we go to, from David Lean to person, which is David Lean, there will be three rows here. Are you with me? In this box. There will be three roads. David Lean, Lawrence of Arabia. David Lean, Bridge on the River Kwai. David Lean, Dr. Shivago. But each row will be pointing to a movie. Right? Are you with me? Okay. Now we go back from here. So now for one person, many. But that means many for each one here from this row. We are pointing to a movie, one movie. Now let's take one movie, Lawrence of Arabia. Now we want to go back to actors. Okay? So Lawrence of Arabia, Peter O'Toole, Alec Guinness, who else? The Zorba, who is that? Anthony Quinn, and little known Omar Sharif. Okay? 
is also in the Lawrence of Arabia. He was not known that well, and that's why Peter Lin liked him, and that's why he got him in Dr. Shivago. But anyway, okay, so now with this movie, we are going into multiple actors, right? Are you with me now? So there will be what? There will be, let's take Lawrence of Arabia, it's one row, but the actors will be how many? In this case, will be four. Right? Peter O'Toole, Alec Guinness, Zorba the Greek, and the Omar Sharif. So that means once you have that row, you have one. Okay? So we got our little formula. So with this now, what do we do? We go now further and I want to discard. Okay, I want to go this. Okay, so now this is what we get. Based on the little formula which we got, we got now what? We have persons, movies, movies and persons. That's what we drew just now. And once you have one cell, you, your body grows many cells, blood cells. So that's what it is now. Okay? So we have now here our persons movie, movie persons. Then we have awards, movie awards. Then we have genre, movie genre. And the transaction has what? Customer from the store and the movie. So if somebody wants to ask any question, any question about the limited information which we have, we can answer. Okay, you ask any question based on this data. You sit in the front, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, which genre was uh, directed by Lee? By Lee, okay. Okay, so now genre. We go into genre here. You help me. You want to come here? You give me the path. Okay, from here. Genre. We have a genre. Yeah. Uh, we could trace the path back from movie genre yeah. to movie ID, back movie ID to person ID. Perfect. You got it. Do you want to teach? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so this is what you have to do. When you come up with this, have devil's advocates in the audience. You are not a devil's advocate, okay? So have devil's advocate. Let them ask questions based on the information is there. Ask any question. As long as the information is there, your task will be to see whether there is a path. Okay? That's your task. Is there a path? It may be a long path, but is there a path? There is a path. Okay? Which is what? Based on the key. Right? That's the path. Yes, sir? I don't know if this is all the complicated, but are we attaching awards to persons or movies or both? Yeah. Come on, you help me. No, I mean, are we doing best actor, best movie, or... What is your question? Where are we attaching the awards? To the movie or the person? We are attaching to... In this case, to the movie. Good question. Okay. In this this case, is our limited video store. Yeah, no, no. That's a very good question. These are all the things we have to consider. That's a great question. Absolutely. Very good question, yeah. You are a devil's advocate. Uh, uh, we have another question here? Yes. Can we trace if the actor and director is the same? Like Kevin Costner and what world? Could be. But this is our limited video store. In hour and a half. In hour and a half. Do you think you can finish your dashboard in hour and a half? No. Okay. Okay? That's why I've been emphasizing it. This is the limited environment. Okay? But very good question. That's another <coughs> devil's advocate. Okay? So have devil's advocates to test the sanity of this mod. Okay? Before you write a single line of code, I don't think you write codes anymore, but you generate code. But somebody has written it, right? It doesn't fall from the sky. Somebody has written it. Okay? All right. So now this one here, we say, okay, this is a little bit difficult. We want to be user-friendly because most of the times we call it user-friendly, 
but we keep on looking for system friendly users right don't we so and that's why they are taking a revenge by buying laptops and using excel right because there is a parallel system going on in the drawer when you go there the drawer gets closed or some key gets pressed and your home page comes up right okay so here is the same thing here this one in the middle is the transactions and all of these are dimensions store customers genre persons movies time and awards okay all right so with that then we say okay we are on the step number six construct metadata repository which is how the relationship between the data how big is the data customer name how big is it how big can we have it and so on and that's what mark had generated which he will go into this is the entity relationship diagram not the emergency room okay so here we have the relations one which is 1a 1b two is their movies three three a three b which is with the um, awards then four is here five is time which is embedded which mark will explain how the um, birth 360 generates the time stamp then six is customers seven is with the genre seven a seven b and eight is the transaction it's the same thing drawn differently because now here we are going to say how big they are okay how big the fields are and that will come with that so with this then we come back to our queries what were the top 10 rented or purchased movies in the last week or month or quarter and year okay so do, does somebody want to do that? I will go back. Okay. Who wants to do it? Come on, just quick. Because he has given me some extra time because I let him speak also. Okay. Who wants to do it? The top 10. What was our query? Hmm? Okay, you want to do it? This was over. What were the top 10 rented or purchased movies in the last week? You want to do that? Come on. Yeah, let me try. Okay, find it. You will do it. All right, uh, we'll get the, uh, we'll, I'll directly go to the data. The we, where do we start? Come That's closer the, and the point it. Transaction. Okay. And from the transaction, you will have the date. Date, transaction date. date figure out the between week as of today okay and, and you give prompt two prompt two okay and then you uh, grab uh, the movie and get it from the movie database and, and do a have prompt. have the transaction the purchase price right we have right. in here the computer add the <coughs> yeah <coughs> perfect thank you okay so that's how to do it so now we have already um, <coughs> here so we were the, on the queries so now to close up we have um, do's and don'ts because I started with the do's and don'ts so I'm closing the loop okay no first your audience do know you first your audience do have one dashboard or screen per page okay one dashboard it should not be cluttered okay don't clutter move to multiple dashboards don't try to put everything that's the next slide put too much in it make the performance dashboard easy to read draw attention to the core content don't get lost okay in the forest see the trees first okay develop accurate and consistent performance dashboards use common sense i have seen some people Coming up with the tenth, ten digit, ten digits after decimal point. Not on the first level. Okay. If you are doing currency transformation, okay, you may need it, but not on the first level. Okay. Think dynamic, but don't change just for the sake of changing. 
people want to have the most current data, but not necessarily up to the minute. It depends on what the application is or what decisions they are going to make. Maybe one day all data is good enough, one week all data is good enough, one month all data is good enough. Okay? Because more current you have, more it's going to cost you. It's just like how many defects should be there in you, what you produce in the manufacturing. There are something called sigmas, right? Three sigmas, four sigmas, six sigmas, you know the sigma, right? Or sigma, which you use in your Excel, sum. That's the capital sigma. This is the small sigma, okay? So if you have only one defect in million, it's going to cost you a lot of money to manufacture. Unless you have 1,000 defects in 1 million manufactured goods, it's going to cost much less. Now you have to see the implications. If it's the life and death question, of course, then it's a different ball game. Okay? But if you're manufacturing screws, come on. Unless those screws are used, and by the way, these orthopedic surgeons, they use screws. They use real screws. They use real hammers. I saw it. <laughs> real hammer. Provide a performance dashboard which is easily printable. Use people who are at the strategic dashboard level. Are Many of them are above 50. And they still want hard copy. Okay? They don't trust your computer. They don't. Okay, so it should be printable on one page, and it should be legible. Printable is one thing, and legible is another. Okay, so it should be printable. Consider that some users might be color deficient. I'm not calling color blind, because that's a wrong word. It's color deficient, depending on the different levels of, I think, proteins or protons or whatever that thing is, something like that. So color deficient. Since 10% of males are color deficient, statistic, don't hold me to it. Google, call Google, okay? 10% and only 1% are females. No wonder. Okay, think internationally as we talked about and keep track of scope creep. Get more money, get more time and do it. Now, don't. A dashboard should not be a catch-all. Don't try to answer every conceivable question on one dashboard. You are going to be a successful failure. Have too many metrics on one performance dashboard. Don't present data dependent on other data. Recursive dashboard is maddening. Don't show something, okay, now in order to know this, how, much, how many uh, parts you have, you have to go these stores or these warehouses. From that warehouse sent to the another warehouse. It's the recursive. It's maddening. Okay, so don't make it recursive. Don't immediately jump to details. Don't provide only one level of data. Instead, provide drill down, roll up to do other summaries, and cross over. Drill down, let's assume you, you are a retail store. You want to know which appliances sold the most in the last month. Okay? Then you want to come back and say on certain brand, uh, toasters, brown, how many did sell this past month? So you are coming up with another summary. Now you want to compare that with some competitor. You are going crossover. Ro drill down, roll up, crossover. Okay. Then don't present matrix in a vacuum, but provide, re provide relevant context. Why is this I here? It's not serving any purpose. Why is this little button there? Not serving any purpose. Just to look pretty? Do you know it takes longer when you have more pictures on it to download? Okay? Everything which is on the dashboard has to have certain purpose. Okay? Then go against conven don't go against conventions. Green is go, yellow is caution. Ready, stop. Don't change it. I have seen some people doing it. Then don't think and on gauges empty is left. Where did the dashboard word come from? Think about it. 
Just think about it. Where? What do you think? From automobile, right? So your gasoline or petrol, wherever you are, in which country, when it's full, it's on this side, right? When it's becoming empty, it goes this way. I saw somebody doing it exactly the other way. So don't go against conventions because you cannot change the conventions. You cannot change the history. Don't try to. Okay, and don't think your first dashboard is going to be your masterpiece. Okay? And do not assume anything. Okay? So with this then, I'm going to raffle this book of mine. Can you see the back benchers? Okay. It's pretty heavy. Also content wise, not just weight wise. Okay. It's selling very, very well. You can get it on the Kindle. I'm not getting any money from Amazon. Okay. Anytime you open Amazon, the first thing they come up with buy Kindle. Okay, so I'm going to raffle that, but there is no free lunch. Okay? You have to fill out the survey, and it, it is not salesy at all. I just want to know more about your environment. So there is a survey which, is, which has Atre on it, so you fill that out in your... Don't do it right now. That's why I never say it ahead of time, because I know that's what people start to do. Do it in your lunch time. Okay? So fill this out, and then also you have to fill out actuate survey. So when you fill out these two, you have to give them to Senia, the front where you checked in. Give those there. Okay? Write down your name, because we are going to raffle. We cannot give the iPad to unknown. Okay? So write your name on it. All right? Okay, so that's what it is where we will have complete the survey and give it to the front desk. And that survey is very simple. It's yes or no. Okay, circle in. Okay. Then if you want to have a copy of this BI Navigator, which is very colorful and which has a lot of information in it, then you have to visit. See that? Can you see it in the back? Okay. So if you want to have it, you have to visit our website and you will be sent. This is an automatic process. Okay. Then we have, okay. You want to have a copy of today's slides? Send me an email, very simple, shaku at atre.com. S-H-A-K-U at atre, A-T-R-E, dot com. And I'm going to send you my slides as well as Mark's slides. We have one, one file, okay? We will sell it to you, send it to you. And then I'm writing, as Nabi mentioned, Dashboard's book. I don't know why I write again. I have written six books. Every time when I'm done with a book, I say never again. Because a book is never finished. It's abandoned. It's a very long process if you want to come up with something good. Okay, there's a lot of trash out there. Okay, but some kind of masochist, you know, that I'm doing it again. Okay, I'm writing that book here. And if you want to know when it is out, then send me an email and then we will have it. And now, Anyone for Rome? I'm teaching a two-day seminar in Rome, my favorite, one of my favorite cities, April 19 and 20. That's a very good time to be in Rome. So if you're interested, send me an email. I will send you the information. I'm sure you're interested, but if you can, then let me know. Okay? All right. So with that then, what we are saying here is... Now we will have one more thing before you go. We have a webinar for the people who missed today's event. And also for you, maybe, if you are interested. It's one hour webinar, March 15, Thursday, Thursday, March 15. We have one hour webinar, and you can be anywhere in the world. As long as you have access to internet, you can hear us. Okay? at 
2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, U.S. Eastern Standard Time, because there are other countries with East Coast also. Okay, all right. So now the 7, 8, 9, and 10 is going to be Mark's, and Mark had given me time. He has told me, take as much time as you want. I have taken 15 minutes of his. Okay, Mark, thank you very much, and once again, thank you, and you have been a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.